So I hope you're here for the right session. It got switched around. Let's make sure. Is this on? Is this on? Is it working okay? All right, great. You guys aren't cheating by looking at the questions yet, are you? There, there are questions. <laughs> this is a recorder. This is my handy dandy recorder. Have you seen one of these? Handy dandy CD quality recorder. So I can actually document the mistakes these guys are making. <laughs> there you go. That's it. So thank you. I am Mark Miller. I run the Trusted Software Alliance, and I also am the host and executive producer of the OWASP podcast show. And actually, I've been here. I've actually done 15 interviews while I'm here, so the site's going to get updated hugely within the next couple of weeks. But what we're here for today is Wait, Wait, Don't Pwn Me. How many people know the NPR show, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me? Okay. If you don't, you're in, you're in for a good time. If you do, you're a volunteer. You're going to help us out as an audience member, right? But first, what I want to do is introduce our distinguished panel. Chris, you go first. Say hi to everybody. Hi, I'm Chris Eng, uh, VP of Research at Barricode, and uh, I'll tell you now, I haven't read the news in the past two weeks, so I'm going to really Excellent. terrible at this. This is going to be great. You guys are going to be able to eat him up. This is great. I'm Josh Corman. I'm Director of Security Intelligence at Akamai, mm -hmm. uh, and I also haven't read the news in two weeks, so I'm going to be <laughs> not very good, but I'm tribal, at least for our facial hair contest, I beat Chris. I, I shaved last week. I beat both of you. <laughs> Member's not over yet. <laughs> I'm going to need another mic on this one over here. So, uh, uh, most people know me as Space Rogue. Uh, I used to be Loft Heavy Industries, ran a website called, and a video blog called Hacker News Network. And up until last Friday, I ran a weekly news podcast. So, I should hopefully know what the hell's going on. <laughs> Excellent. Now, he actually challenged these guys. He says, I know I've got all the news down. So this is going to be cool. This is going to be cool. I need a scorekeeper. Would anybody volunteer? You got a notebook or a pen so you can be a scorekeeper? Who would do that for me? That way you don't get picked on during the show. How's that? Good. I got an official scorekeeper here. Now, since you raised your hand too, yes, I need an audience mic here. We're going to start off with the audience limerick challenge. <laughs> So what I've done is I've taken three news items and I've turned them into a limerick and she has to tell me the last word of the limerick in order to get the question right. All right. So Chris, why don't you read the first limerick challenge out right here and don't say the last word. First one. Is that the top one here? Yeah. Okay. You ready? There once was a site that was stupid. It failed when its system got rooted. It was love at first bite on this matchmaking site when black hats shot arrows through. Okay, Cupid. You got it. Give her a hand. She got one. All right. You got the next one. All right. Two out of three, you get the prize. I don't know what the prize is yet, but I'll get you something. Go ahead. Uh, need a volume here? That's okay. I think you were supposed to. Okay, he really didn't need a fat modem when he, what he used was seen as a token. With the things that he took, the government shook into Russia ran little boy. Snowden? Yes. How many got that? Snowden? Good. All right. And the last one, Space? What do we got? Two out of three? Yeah. Ready? Is this working? Yeah. The system was built to ensnare. But the public was quick to despair because it's a brick, especially when sick, and you're in need of anybody? Health care, Obamacare, excellent, good. She got two out of three, Judge. What does? <laughs> great, thank you. Suggest, so uh, see me afterwards. We'll, we'll do something. That's great. Mark, we never answered the question as to whether Space Rogue will record your personal. Uh, your, your voicemail greeting <laughs> if you win. How many people would, would want Space Rogue on your voicemail? I don't see any hands going Nobody up. Nobody wants me on their voicemail. <laughs> All right. 
So that's good. That's good. I've got my next set here. And this is going to be, I'm going to start so that we can pick on the panelists here to get them started to see where we're going to go. I'm going to popcorn down the group. I'm already seeing heads shaking here. Each correct answer is worth two points. And we'll do it at first. All right, Chris, here we go here. You got it? What yeah. Bletchley Park code breaker from World War II died this week at the age of 92? Someone died this week? <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. All right. Okay. Anybody want to grab that one? First name starts with an M, and yeah. the last name is Blaze Bailey. Bob Beatty. He's, uh, give two points of space on that one. Thank you. Like Mavis Beatty Blaise was a Bailey. British student, 19 years old, when she got called up by the government, and she thought they wanted her to be Mata Hari, but it turned out they wanted her to be a code breaker, and she actually, her code breaking helped the Allies cripple the Italian army in 1951, 41, and assisted the uh, Normandy invasion. She died this week. All right. You know what I learned about? What's that? 92. Give him another point. He's got we, three points. We both points heard him say that. <laughs> All right. You know what okay. I learned recently? What? If you didn't think Johnny Cash was already the coolest man who ever lived, he actually mm -hmm. did code breaking. What? He what? actually did crypto. Anyhow. Uh, anyway. more. Yeah, it, in, when he was in service? <laughs> I'll have to look that up. All right. Josh? What, GitHub, what did GitHub do this morning? in response to a brute force attack that resulted in compromised accounts? They disclosed the breach. <laughs> <laughs> Give him one for a good try on that. Go ahead, Space, you got it. They, they reset them, but they did something else. That's okay. They actually banned weak passwords. But here's the problem, and I actually documented this. They've banned logins of commonly used weak passwords with like password one and I love you two, but what they didn't ban was password two and I love you three. <laughs> so I don't know how far this one's going to go. All right, good. Space, you ready? I'm ready. Google announced yesterday that it had upgraded all of its SSL certificates. What did the upgrade do? Oh. Went from version one to version two. I That's a, <laughs> That's I was here yesterday. I didn't see any news. Actually, they increased the RSA key length to 2048 bits. I should have guessed that. I should have guessed that. Chris, did you know that one? Fine. Give him two on that one. Oh, that's okay. a one. <laughs> Google said Monday that the move uh, was announced in May, but they actually implemented it a month early, so it actually is working. I really now. need alcohol to be up here. That can be provided. <laughs> All right, Chris. What company did Facebook try to buy for $3 billion only to get rejected by its 23-year-old owner? Oh, my God. I totally know this. How do you I not know? <laughs> what was worth three Instagrams? Wait. You want it? You don't know it? I, I do. I just can't remember. Snapchat. Snapchat. Uh, the real question is, what the hell is Snapchat, and why would anybody even pay $3 for it? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy all the way around. That's right. Space gets two on that. What's that? Okay. This is a good one. Anybody into sports? I hope my kids don't know what it is. Go Sox. Josh. Esports Entertainment, an online gaming company, settled a complaint this week for $350,000. At issue was the company's installation of what on subscribers' computers? You know, that's got something to do with specifically what was space? Oh, I don't know specifically. A Bitcoin miner? I don't know. Give him two points. Wow. They sure. The people that downloaded their software for six ninety five a month, the the co founder and a software engineer were accused of installing Bitcoin software at fourteen thousand of those computers. And they were using it to mine for bitcoins. <laughs> Whew. All right. Okay, Chris. Google added two major technologies to its patch reward program this week. What are the two what name one platform? Google. I know. Open, was open source stuff, right? Yes, both were. Uh, open SSL. <laughs> the man says no. Go ahead. PHP. 
you want to guess? You want to make another guess? No? Uh, it was Apache and Android. Give him three points for getting both. Awesome. What's the score so far? Woo! All right. So, uh, last one in this set right here, Chris. CEO Marissa Mayer announced that Yahoo will be doing what in response to the NSA tapping into their systems? Encrypting connections between data centers. Two points. Encrypting connections between data centers. What took so long? <laughs> Excellent. All right, good. Thank you. All right, I need someone to play bluff the listener. Anybody want to participate with us here? Have you, if you're NPR, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them read a story. There's three stories. And you have to tell whether or not that story is true or false. All right? You guys want to read them or you want me to read them? It's, it's, okay, good. If you don't volunteer, I'm going to volunteer somebody for you. Please, come on up. Come on up. Let's see. I'm going to need a microphone, and then you guys pass the rest back and forth. Is this? That's the one that gets weird. All right, good. Say hi to David, everybody. Hi, David. hi I'm David, and I do security. <laughs> All right, good. Um, what I want you to do is read the first true or false over the top. Just read the, the one-liner. Just the one-liner. A Boston composer created a dance production based on Anonymous, the hacker group. True or true false? Or false. I'll, I'll go with true. That is true. There's now a production in Boston that is... <laughs> oh, you knew this one? Oh, all right. Oh, okay. So he's got, he's got to get one out of... He's got to get two out of three. You Josh, the, you got the next one? You want the explanation? You guys want to hear the explanation? or do you just, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, read it off. It's not every day you see a dancer illustrating the formation of a botnet or the damage done by a DDoS attack, but the flourish of modern dance movements, the frenetic sounds of electro-acoustic beats, and a classical musical ensemble. Yet that's precisely what a Boston composer and New York choreographer have done to tell the story of the subversive online community Anonymous through a unique dance production that premiered last weekend. This was in Forbes. I mean, people just don't have enough to do, do they? It's... Josh, you got it? Second All right. One? Second one? One-liner. I'm just wondering if that ballet is going to have uh, Aaron Barr putting his something <laughs> in a hornet's nest or not. Um, all right, next story. You can't have your privacy violated if you don't know your privacy is violated, said U.S. Congressman Mike Rogers. True say, or false? Say that again. so we can... You can't have your privacy violated if you don't know your privacy is violated. U.S. Congressman Mike Rogers. He's going with false on that. <laughs> That's quite a help. <laughs> it is true. It is. All right. Just I will read the full quote. Yeah. You can't have your privacy violated if you don't know your privacy is violated, right? Maybe the fact that we haven't had any complaints come forward with any specific specificity arguing that their privacy has been violated clearly indicates in 10 years, clearly indicates that somebody must be doing something exactly right. This is the congressman, word for word. That was a direct quote from the congressman. Okay, one, what's that? <laughs> That's why we need cavalry. You got anyway. it, go ahead. Two or false. The NSA insists that transparency hurts Americans' privacy because they, the NSA, aren't looking at it anyway. You want to read it again? Are you okay? Uh -oh. Yeah, that's, he says true. What true. do you guys The answer true. is true. Robert Litt, the general counsel for the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, said that it would have a privacy diminishing effect if intelligence officials were forced to review every piece of data vacuumed up under its internet and phone surveillance programs. Attempting to make this determination would require the intelligence community to research and review personally identifying information solely for the purpose of complying with the reporting requirements even if the information has not been determined to contain foreign intelligence, they argued. Such an effort would conflict with our efforts to protect privacy. Lit, while addressing the panel, added that such a requirement would perversely undermine privacy. It's just, some of it is absolutely unbelievable. It's, it's astounding. All right, good. Got two winners so far, excellent. Now, this is the lightning fill in the blank 
There is no explanation for these, but I'm going to leave a blank in the statement. Did you hear that? The NSA says the metadata isn't useful anyway. <laughs> but yet they still collect it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Chris, I'm going to go with you. This is a fill in the blank. You ready? Is it still current events? Within the last week. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. According to an article, what company has seen a huge drop off in demand for its hardware in emerging markets? which the company blames on fears about NSA using American hardware to, hardware to spy on the rest of the world. Cisco. Cisco. Two points. Cisco's blaming their loss of revenue on NSA. <laughs> okay. Josh, recently Silk Road has been in the news. What is Silk Road? Silk Road is an underground economy using the Tor network, often selling things like Drugs. Drugs, give him two. Silk Road is an online black market for drugs. It's back up again. <laughs> and they use Tor. Yeah. No, it's a 2.0. Yeah. All right. Space? Eight for bonus points. The Silk Road started economic trade and development in China. I'd, I'd do a negative one on that because it's not current. Not current. <laughs> negative one. Negative one. All right. Negative one. Negative Space. Two. So who was arrested and charged with managing Silk Road's website while collecting tens of millions of dollars in Bitcoin? I don't remember his name. Dread Pirate Ross. Roberts. Do you know that, Chris? Dread Pirate Roberts. Dread Pirate Roberts is his handle, which is the next question, so you get two points in advance of the next question. Yeah, I didn't know Give him two. The his, handle I would have got. <laughs> well, his name try. is Ross Ulbrich. Yeah, okay. Ulbrich. What kind of he Ulbrich? had 144,000 bitcoins worth $100 million at today's exchange. Which are now in the property as evidence of the U.S. <laughs> Seriously, look up Silk Road. The recipe for Silk was separated, so only half the family knew half of the way. Do you want to take went. another half. point away, yes, or are you going to keep going? <laughs> it's early security. <laughs> okay. So, Chris, who has pledged over $1 million bail for release of Ross Ulbrich? Not Larry Josh Corman. Josh Corman. <laughs> Actually, his mother and dad have put up seven hundred thousand dollars from their house, and his friends and relatives have chipped in the other three hundred thousand for his bail. Who? Ross Ulbrich. And he's still not out. So, all right, Josh, this is yours. Which Internet Explorer browser version has the DOS vulnerability? Six, seven, or eight? Can I choose all of the above? <laughs> all of the above. He gets, that's it. That's absolutely true. Trick all question. of the above. <laughs> There's no trick to these questions. Space. Which company received the best risk management solution award at the Adam Smith Awards 2013? I have no idea. The company that makes the browser we just talked about. Oh, Microsoft? <laughs> yes. All right. Give. Well, I put those in sequence it's because... A half a point. It does not get a point for that. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. You want another one then? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll always take another one. Um, Luxembourg's Data Production Authority de declared and cleared the company, this company, of data production violations related to the U.S. National Security Agency's PRISM sp spying program. Which company did they clear? No, Luxembourg is next to go, but that's all I know. What was the answer to the previous Microsoft. question? Microsoft. He's correct. <laughs> that's only one point. <laughs> Microsoft. Microsoft. Uh, all right. I thought you read the news. There you I go. I you wrote the news. Read Luxembourg news. All right. Chris, here we go. For two points. On November 18th, 2013, the United States Supreme Court declined to review the NSA phone spying case. Why? True. <laughs> True, but what, what reason did they give? Um, they didn't believe it was relevant. They, they didn't gave like no, that they went straight to the Supreme Court. I don't know. They gave no reason. <laughs> That's a trick question. No. <laughs> that was the headline. 
All right. Okay, Josh, what parliament, which parliament is considering not sharing any data with the United States? The EU parliament. There you got it. Exactly. Two points for Josh. The EU parliament says Josh is coming up no behind. more from us. Great. You're coming up quick. Space. Six people were arrested for the theft of $45 million from where? Bedroom. I don't know. I just <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys get You know that one, right? They only had 44 million. At the <laughs> <laughs> Anybody know? What's with ATM? He gets two points. <laughs> Who would you like to donate your points to? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. Guys. Excellent. And, and the fun. people in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Josh, final one in this series. In October, who revealed that hackers were able to steal the source code for some of its products and access the records of almost 3 million users after breaking into its systems? Poor Brad Arkin. Uh, <laughs> Adobe. <laughs> Adobe. Adobe, it is good. Actually, Two Brian Krebs revealed it, though. <laughs> All right, thank you. How was that? How'd you do? You do okay on some of those? Hope so. I need a volunteer, the guy that... Come on up. This is a plant here. This is called not my job. So these questions don't necessarily have to do anything with security. Okay. <laughs> Let's turn this on so you can hear. What's your name? Phil. Phil, let me get this for a second. Phil. All right. So, Phil. Yes. Where did the word pwn come from? As in, don't pwn me. From the Pony Awards at Black Hat? Josh, Josh, give it to him. What is it? Pony, pony Awards came from the word pony. <laughs> not, you, got there. you know what it is? People were saying, I own you, and the P is so close to the O, they kept mistyping and finally gave up and called it pony. I pwn you. That's it's true. from the gaming world, actually. <laughs> the dating world? I think it's from the gaming world. Okay. The gaming gamers world. would say, you yep. know, yeah. Yep, good. All right. No, 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 you got two more to go. Okay. All right. How do you get things removed from Facebook after you're dead? What's the process that Facebook has? I told you it was like, not my job. It has something to do with some kind of certificate. I'll guess that you can't. <laughs> Death you, you present a death certificate. Exactly. You have to go to Facebook and present a birth certificate and a death certificate. After you're dead. Exactly. <laughs> okay, good. So one, one out of two. The Final alternative one. is to never put anything on Facebook to begin with. A new technology related to credit cards was released last week called COIN. Nothing to do with Bitcoin. What does COIN do? To give you her point. Please. <laughs> yes. Um, Hold on. It's a single digital card that can store up to eight credit cards or loyalty cards and swipe it like a regular credit Excellent. card. Excellent. You're going to give them the point or you're going to keep it? It has a very large <laughs> attack surface. Yeah. Yes, right. Thank but well, thank you. Thank Good. You. Thank you. Say thank you. It, really only, it only stores eight. That was an interesting one because it really is, it looks like a credit card and you swipe your data into it and it stacks up all of your credit cards on this one credit card. And so when you swipe it, it says, which credit card would you like to use? It has no authentication and it has a bunch <laughs> of other issues too. All right. Yeah, but I'm sure no one's been pwned yet, so it must be perfectly safe. <laughs> it's still mythical in the fact that it's not shipping yet. I can only oh, order yeah. one to play with though. Oh, I would too, yeah. And, and I know other people have. All right. Okay, we're doing good. Yeah, loyalty cards are probably fine. Who carries loyalty cards with it? Like actually, that's actually not true. The Depending on the card, there are, have been attacks against like airline mile cards and stuff to get the miles, especially in other countries. So, yeah, go ahead. Okay, take a point away from here. <laughs> All right. I need one more, uh, one more volunteer for Bluff the Listener. We're going to do three more news stories to see if they're true or false. Don't everybody jump at once. Please, come on up. Chris? 
And your name is, hold on. Oh, you're already laughing, right? Yeah, okay. Jean? Jean. Great, thanks. Where are you from, Jean? New York. New York City? Yes. Did you walk here? No, I didn't walk here. Oh. <laughs> All right. Chris? Good banter, Mark. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> True or false? There is now an iPhone app called Driplet for your shower head that beeps when you use too much water. False. The answer is true. That is true. Uh, I just saw some face palms on that. <laughs> that interesting. Wouldn't your phone get wet? <laughs> <laughs> Let's learn about this. Let's go ahead. Driplet is a new smart water meter. It tracks how much water a person uses in the shower and beeps to warn when they're approaching a preset limit. There's also, of course, an iPhone app for seeing the usage and temperature data. So the idea is that this will help consumers save water, both for the health of the planet and their pocketbooks. Save water, save the planet, save money, and lots of other happy, touchy-feely stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see what else we got here. Okay. The website, Assassination Market, is a crowdfunding service that allows anyone that lets anyone anonymously contribute Bitcoin towards a bounty on the head of any government official. True. Correct. <laughs> and you wonder why I'm concerned about the security <laughs> of the internet of things. <laughs> Kuwabataki Sanjuro has created a kind of Kickstarter for political assassinations. Assassination markets rules specify that if someone is on its hit list and is killed, and yes, Sanjuro hopes that many targets will be, any hitman who can prove that he or she was responsible received the collected funds. That is absolutely true, taken quote for quote from a news article. Space, what do we got? How, what's our score so far for Gene? One. One out of two, good. But if you can prove that you did the hit, then don't you also get a jail sentence along with the coins? <laughs> All right. True or false? Bitcoin goes a long way towards cigarettes, so it's in, oh. in jail. True or false, Hollywood studios are urging theater operators to crack down on in-theater camcording with the deployment of night vision goggles. True. Correct. <laughs> night vision goggles, <laughs> low light binoculars, and security cameras. Well, wow, Wired reported on this this week? Yeah. This, that's like two years old. Yeah. Hey, don't that's bust Wired me for out. You. <laughs> that's not, I'm not blaming you. I'm blaming Wired. <laughs> All right. For our final session here, we have 12 more questions for the panel. What's the You're score currently? If you didn't count them, they don't count. Ooh. Yo! How did you get 10 points? <laughs> how, did you not, okay. how did you not have more than 10? I'm going to read the question, and whoever bangs the table first, and you guys have to agree on the bang, or whoever shouts out the answer first, and the audience judges who says it first, okay? Shout it, shout it. Shout it. Ready? You can shout before I finish the question. <laughs> Josh Corman. Okay, number one. Hackers exploited a flaw in what company's software to launch a rash of electronic break-ins against government agencies that began last December... Then left wrong. Then left back doors to return to many of the machines Bit as nine. recently as last month. Bit nine? No. Well, Let's think. These guys lost two points each, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh come on, yeah. Wait, so I can get ahead by just not answering? Yes. The answer is Adobe Systems. I, oh, I didn't hear. I no, he, said he, he said Cold Fusion. Okay, sorry. Then give him one point because he got Adobe, but Josh Cold Fusion loses is wrong. Two. I, I, don't, I don't lose my two that night. <laughs> no, he doesn't lose his two. Now that you know how to play. He totally loses his two. Should these be worth four points because you can get them wrong? And you lose two if you get a wrong okay. answer? Four, four points for a real answer. If you get a wrong answer, you only lose two. <laughs> Man, you're like my grandma. Okay. On Monday, hackers claimed they used zero-day vulnerability to, bre to breach on what support forum software? The software itself, not the forum. V-Bulletin, four points. Good. 
A group of hackers claimed to have exploited an undocumented vulnerability in the Vive Bulletin Internet form in order to break into the next question. <laughs> okay. Using the term zero day. Number three. You ready? ready? The estimated 860,000 users. Mac Rumors. They got it. Oh, come on. The, the Mac Rumors was using V Bulletin. And so the 860,000 users all had to change their passwords immediately after hack, hackers got in. Oh, pity point. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You must have a lot of time okay. to do news. <laughs> Josh and Chris, this is a freebie. Impossible to miss. I don't like those expectations. What well-known MIT professor and linguist... <laughs> who are you going to give your points to? I would have said that. <laughs> oh, Chris gets two. All right. Um, the diff and what Chomsky said was the difference with the totalitarian states is that the citizens couldn't do anything about it. If we don't expose... Uh, the security and the separate parts that are, are valid for the parts that are not valid, then we're complicit. We're complicit with what's going on if we don't do anything about it. Number five. And you're out of this one? Okay. <laughs> you're doing that on purpose. All right, can you hear me okay? Okay. Mobile, the number five of 12. <laughs> number six. No. Number five. Mobile botnets are on the rise and cyber criminal, criminals are using what cloud messaging service as a conduit for sending data from command and control servers to malware? Is this too distracting? Did you get that at all? I'm going to get penalized if I get it wrong. I'm not going to guess. Google. Google Yeah. Okay. That'll slow down. Good. Whew. Okay. Fine. This is, this is kind of a hard one, so if anybody can scream it out before they get to it, go for it. Google released emergency security updates for Chrome in order to patch critical vulnerabilities demonstrated Thursday, last Thursday, by a security researcher at which competition? Four points. Wow. Excellent. Number seven. Should we do number five again? <laughs> number seven. The creators of web-based attack tool called Angler Exploit Kit have added an exploit for a known vulnerability in what Microsoft application? I don't want to guess. I don't want to guess. I don't know, but I know what I would guess. Go ahead. You're so far ahead. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Make a guess. Docking two points. Oh. It's something that runs in Internet Explorer. And you watch movies on it in Internet Explorer. Thank you. Silver <laughs> <laughs> light. All right, good. That's good. Michael Wilson. Everybody know Michael? A 24 year old Florida man admitted in November to a guilty plea that while working as a financial services representative for Memorial Hospital Urgent Care Center in in Pembroke, Florida, he allegedly sold what? What did he sell? Could you repeat the question? Absolutely. Uh, some guy was working as a financial services representative for a hospital, and he illegally sold what? It's not drugs, by the way. We're here at a security conference. Come on. I'm going to guess secret records. Thank you. He sold tax refund fold. Uh, he took... He sold tax refund fraudsters 400 patient IDs. He took the patient IDs, got money for them from people that were going to do tax frauds. And then he himself started using them to file false tax returns. <laughs> Whew, two points on that one. Give him two on that one. Only two. 
Okay, this is an easy one. You've got to be ready for this. Everybody knows this one. Anonymous hacktivist Jeremy Hammond. Ooh, I know this. Keep going. Look how long the answer is. Okay, fine. Josh gets five points if he gets this, and Doc five if he doesn't. Okay. Anonymous hacktivist Jeremy Hammond sentenced to 10 years in prison for doing what? For that specific sentencing was for the hack of Strat4. Which is what? What, did, what was the hack? Uh, the, an intelligence, Strat4 is a global intelligence. Sort of what did he get? What did he get? Oh, he stole a bunch of uh, subscribers and credit card numbers and donated a million dollars to charity. Five points. Five million private email messages and 60,000 customer credit card numbers. Nice. Oh, by the way, after he donated a million dollars to charity, none of the charities got to keep the money. In fact, some <laughs> of them had to pay fees on the transaction. Oh, oh, give him, thank you, thank you. Give him another point on that one. That was cool. Josh, you're out of this one? It's about Jeremy. Okay. <laughs> uh, in the Jeremy Hammond case, who was Sabu? Okay, so Sabu was the titular leader of LulzSec, of which Jeremy Hammond participated, who at one point during the LulzSec uh, was actually arrested. He was arrested. Hector Munson. <laughs> he was actually arrested and was complicit with the FBI during right. part of those operations. Excellent. I think Chris yes. Rose got that. <laughs> All right. Two more questions. Very short one on this one. Ready? Where is AVAR conference being held next month? AVAR? Association of Antivirus Asia Researchers International Conference. <laughs> Doc him too. <laughs> it's a different continent. Where is it going to be held? I've never heard of that conference. India. India. <laughs> Take my cheat sheet, please. All right, last question of the entire show here. Is it worth 10? What's the score? What's the score? <laughs> All right. Oh, oh even pumped up by his answer. So six points. I told you it was going to be ugly. Right. We need six points. We need six po This is a six-point question. Sorry, Chris, you're out of this one. Uh. Well, I, I could answer it and stop Josh. From <laughs> there you go. Put a block on him. A JDOS. All right. <laughs> yes, it is. This is, um, this is pretty interesting, and it's true. All of these have been true. The U.S. NSA and the Department of Homeland Security have threatened legal action to block the sale of what that ridicules these two powerful government agencies? The government is trying to block the sale of what that criticizes? This is a risky move. Oh. This is a risky move. A t-shirt. Six points right there. They are blocking the sale has of a logo. T shirts that says um, on here it says uh, hold on. The only part of government that actually listens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is this a true story? That is absolutely a true story. It's very disturbing. That seems, that seems old, true. You don't remember the old crypto T shirts the shirts and the mission from the nineties? Same thing. All right. So, what's the final score? <laughs> I have well, surprise. Who reads news every day all day? One. Uh, imagine that. Water Let me see. No, not by as much as he should have. <laughs> Actually, maybe I used it last night. I was supposed to give these guys a flask as a winner, so I'll get you an OWASP stamp flask. Ooh! As well, add that to my attrition collection. There you go. So. I, I hope that was fun for you. What I tried to do is actually show the absurdity of what's happening right now. That so many things 
um, would appear to be false on the front, but it's all happening right now. And it's something that we all need to be aware of. And I'll leave it to these three to finish off and tell us why we should be doing this. Just make something up. All I know is Josh and I are going to go immediately look for tickets to that dance production about Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally not joking. <laughs> You're going to go? Oh, take a film it for us. That would be great. Uh, this very level of illiteracy in some of the news and some of the politicians is one of the reasons Space and I and others are trying to uh, be an ambassador and voice of technical literacy uh, through the cavalry. So if we didn't think we needed it, this should punctuate why we do. Yeah, good point. I mean, I, I actually do a talk on media hype and InfoSec, and uh, I see this sort of idiocy that you pointed out today all the time. So it's not just fun and games sitting here in the... Wait, do you, if I idiocy, are you referring to us? <laughs> or well, if you want to take the label. <laughs> Just clarify. You know, what's even sadder than that is what you just heard. All the examples happened within the last week. This is happening constantly, and it's getting worse by the day. So there's nothing that I can leave you with to say go out and, and prosper, but... Uh, now that you're aware of it, you can actually start reading these articles with a different slant, I hope. Okay? Thank you guys for coming so much. Thanks.